Hello friends, starting soon an unmissable live coverage here on Sailor Today TV. You are watching Sailor Today TV, your unmissable dose of vitamin C. Hello. This wonderful webinar of Shokat Mukherjee. I will invite the Master Captain Ja to say a few words. Captain Ja, sir. Shokat is a good speaker and good writer and reader also. So, in front of him, talking is useless. I think we should hand over the mic directly to Shokat and ask him to start it. Right, sir. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, sir. And uh, for the benefit of uh, all, and I'm sure uh, Shokat Mukherjee is well known, like uh, uh, Master did mention, 
but i will go and i have to do uh, 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 the works by mentioning uh, give a little of his bio uh, captain shokat mukherji is a cmi member for 16 years of sailing experience and having over 10 years of show based assignment areas of training and development quality assurance and compliance business development deployment of strategy tools social media management digital transformation leading change management talent management and leadership development in 2017 captain shokat authored and launched maritime industries first book on leadership development and team building title mind over water captain shokat is a certified leadership coach and professional master virtual trainer he partnered with irs in formulating and conducting the three day master class on train the virtual trainer title create your extra conducted by irs in association with tnc he founded his consultancy firm the naval connection in 2019 with a mission of building values for the future over to you sir a uh, very good afternoon late good afternoon or good evening to everybody thank you sir thank you captain shashi kumar thank you captain ja and i'm uh, very grateful for uh, to cmmi for giving me this opportunity to address all of you and um, this is going to be a very short session i'm not going to use of course i'm going to share my screen and show you uh, some pictures only no text just some pictures okay i would just i would just uh, request everybody to keep themselves on mute then we can have a small interactive session after the um, after uh, my short lecture captain shashi kumar if can i request the host to just to keep your keep keep everybody on mute please there's some background noise coming it's uh... right so thank you gentlemen and uh, ladies and uh, i'm going to start speaking on a topic called navigating through buka i mean i've been getting some very pertinent questions over the last few days when i have announced this topic and today is the day when we will get to know and i'll share my thoughts on this buka which is not so new a concept but uh, many of us uh, we are not aware of the ramifications of buka buka into our own lives so uh, my name is captain shaukat mukherjee and i uh, generally do a workshop on buka for a full fledged 3 hours and 5 hours workshop but here i've consolidated all my all my learnings and and what i need to say about buka into just a 20 minutes a uh, small speech and like i said i'm going to share my screen now and i'm going to show you only pictures no text only pictures right so i want you to just take a moment okay <coughs> take a moment and look at these pictures on your screen yes so imagine you are driving a car in a foreign country i'm still getting a lot of background noise so can you just kindly check your check your microphones and just keep yourselves on mute please thank you so much yeah so imagine yourself you're driving down Uh, maybe the host uh, can mute everybody except captain shokat mukherji that will be better captain sadik can you kindly mute everyone uh, captain yanki sharma's i think microphone is not mute okay thank you sir so i'll continue so if you can imagine yourself on a foreign country on the roads and what you see is just a crossover of flyovers and you are somewhere here maybe in your car imagine this in your life imagine you are in the bottom of a pit which is filled with venomous snakes you know just take a moment to think and i'm sure that you would want to get out of this hole right it is a very very deadly picture you can't even imagine yourself in this pit of a uh, venomous snakes so i'll change the topic let's turn the table and in this particular pit in this same hole imagine they put hundreds and hundreds of gold coins so there are no more snakes but this hundreds of gold coins inside that hole so in a moment you will experience a change of feelings isn't it you will 
experience the feeling from horror to jubilation. Imagine you're standing in front of a wall with all these intricate mathematical formula, right? All these intricate mathematical formula, you're standing in front of a wall. But the only difference is that you are not a mathematician. You are just a person okay. in the room. So this is what I want you to imagine. Imagine that you are climbing a complex, uh, you're, you're climbing a complex, uh, you know, the scaffolding, you know, trying to reach somewhere. Imagine yourself, imagine yourself waking up in the morning and going in front of the mirror and you hold the mirror to your face and this is what you see. It's, it's totally unacceptable, you know, it's straight from the horror movies, isn't it? And this is my favorite uh, picture. So imagine yourself inside this picture. Take, take a few seconds. Imagine you are a part of this war. What I'm showing you is a picture of the Dharma Yudh. It's the Kurukshetra. And as we know, Kurukshetra Yudh is just like any other war. It was a war of bloodshed and tears and people dying and mass murder. But even then, after all this, this war is solemnized into the history, into our history and ingrained into our consciousness as the fight of good over evil. So when you look at all these pictures, when you look at all these pictures, you will find the situation which is, which is termed as VUCA. VUCA is, like I said, not a new concept. If somebody's drawing on the screen, can, can somebody please just stop uh, using the whiteboard on the screen because I'm getting all these pictures all these uh, lines on the screen, please. Thank you. Right. So this concept of war epitomizes the environment of VUCA. So you, in that war, if you imagine yourself in the war, it, you have volatility, you have uncertainty, you have complexity, and you have ambiguity. So VUCA is a concept. It's an acronym, actually, which was developed in 1987. It was developed by leadership coaches the strategists developed this concept, two strategists, basically Warren Bennis and Bert Nannis. So they, they, they sort of conceptualized and tried to understand what happens in war. And in order to fight war, fight war itself, in order to strategize and build strategies in war, they coined a term called VUCA, where you have at one point of time in one environment, you have volatile volatility, you have uncertainty, you have complexity and you have ambiguity. It is like, it is like you know, uh, being in, uh, be, be, being a soldier and being in a sandstorm, inside a sandstorm. If you can imagine yourself here, the, it's, it's very, you know, it's very ambiguous. It's very uncertain because you can have enemies uh, right anywhere uh, close to you and you might not even see him or see her. The, the enemies can sh start shooting. So it's, it's like being in sandstorm. It's, a, it's an environment of uncertainty. So if you see all these pictures that I've shown you, I shown you so far, even the picture of the flyovers, the, the hole with the gold coins, the complex uh, uh, scaffolding, the picture of war, the person standing in front of the mathematical wall, the, the pit, uh, the hole uh, which is filled with venom mistakes and, and also the sandstorm, you'll see each and every picture depicts a picture, an environment of VUCA. It depicts either volatility or uncertainty or, you know, it's, it's chaos, it's chaotic, and definitely it is ambiguous. So talking of volatility, you know, what is, what is, the, what is the meaning of volatility? Volatility is something which is, the situation is so volat volatile that's changing so fast. You know, have you seen, have you, most of you been in a casino? Have you sat down in front of a casino in front of uh, the machine and here it goes. Ah. You know, something like this, you know, the situation is changing so fast. You can't do anything. It's, it's out of your control. It's changing and changing and changing. It's, it's very fast. So that movement is called volatile movement. But before we understand how to handle or how to tackle VUCA in our lives, how to strategize against VUCA. Let me give you a few VUCA examples. Okay. 
the last example of VUCA was what uh, happened in, in 2013. If you see the effect of Brent crude, the, the price, the graph shows the travel of the prices of Brent crude from 2013 to 2015. So if you see the graph in 2013, the Brent crude was priced at around $120 a barrel. And then it was a boom for the economy. A lot of people invested their monies and, and they thought that it's, it's really going to go uh, very nice for them in the next two years. And imagine when the, and imagine when the Brent crude bottomed at, at less than $45 a barrel in 2015. So if you were a businessman that time and if you would have spent your money or invested your money thinking that Brent crude is going to rise, and you, you, you were destroyed in the next two years. So that was a VUCA movement. VUCA is something that you do not perceive, or you perceive something, you perceive a future to be of something, and then it turns out to be absolutely the opposite. So that's a VUCA movement. Another very, very interesting example of uh, some, somebody gave me when I was doing a class on VUCA is that you know uh, if you are a businessman today and if you're talking about investing in a company uh, with computers and mainframes and hardware, a lot of these hardwares are going to go obsolete in the future, in the future, you know. So a lot of these hardware are because most of the data that's going to be stored in the cloud now. So if you're a businessman, if you're investing on hardware, be very, very careful because it can really be a VUCA moment. The, the most important VUCA moment and the, 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 the best example of VUCA moment is what we are facing right now. There is a VUCA world around us right now. See, the, the situation is so volatile you know, with the new virus coming in, the new strains. Every day we hear, we read the newspapers and we see that the new strain of virus is coming in. The world is changing so fast. You know, we, are not, we, we were not prepared for the change, uh, for this, this faster change of the world. So it, it's, the situation is very volatile. The situation is uncertain. You know, when we say that mm -hmm. situation, Mm. Okay. Uh, Captain Hugh, your your microphone is uh, is not muted, sir. Can you please just mute your mi microphone, Captain Hugh? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So, sorry, I'll come back to what I was saying. So, we are in a VUCA moment. So the situation is not only volatile; it's uncertain. And when we say the situation uncertain, means that we don't know anything about the future what the future will have, what, what we are having right now, right? We don't know. We are just going from day to day. The situation is complex. And when we say the situation is complex, we mean that there is not one single factor which affects the outcome. There are multiple factors. If there were only one factor or two factors which affects the outcome, then we would have controlled those factors. But, but it's not that. There are multiple factors which affects the outcome. And that makes the situation so complex. And also that the situation is ambiguous. When we say the situation is ambiguous, we mean that we do not have any past data to corroborate our findings. So, you know, there, there, there was no coronavirus uh, earlier to this. So we do not have any past data. So risk assessment is, is done generally on the prevalence of past data. And that's the why, that's why how we predict the future analysis and we forecast the happenings in the future. But since we don't have any past data, the, the future becomes very ambiguous. So coming back to my, uh, this, this very, very apt and very, very good uh, picture of war, you know, where war signifies VUCA, it signifies volatility, uncertainty, chaotic exposed, you know, yeah. environment and ambiguous, complexity and ambiguous. Uh, I would like to tell you, you know, all throughout the ages, the, the strategies are best learned from the strategies developed on war. You see the difference between strategies which take place in a boardroom and, and uh, uh, people in the boardroom, the board members, you know, they play their they play their cards very close to their chest. It's very difficult to if you're not a part of that boardroom itself, you're not sitting if you're not sitting there in the boardroom yourself. It is very difficult for somebody to understand what's going on in the minds of the board members. Even when they come out of the boardroom, they hardly tell you why and how those decisions on what basis were those decisions taken. So it's very very difficult to understand and learn from the board members and how strategies are built. But let's think about what happens in military. You know, in military, even the smallest decisions are documented. The larger, larger ones obviously are documented. Yeah.
even the smallest decisions are documented and even the enemy camp you know and of course enemy doesn't mean that you're for who you're fighting against it means your opposition even the opposition takes a decision they document that decision so leaders and business strategists have always learned their strategies more from the from the armed forces rather than the corporate literati right so even now vuka was learned from the the military forces like what you see is a chakra view right most of you will uh, will know from the uh, from the mahabharata that uh, to combat vuka this is one of the strategies which they did and they formed a formation which was called chakra view remember the abhiman knew he knew how to enter the chakra view but he never knew how to come out of the chakra view so what you're doing is you're creating an a formation to handle vuka but in turn you are creating vuka by, for for somebody else so you're creating an uncertain atmosphere for somebody else by actually handling the uncertainty yourself now this is where i chose this topic from you know like this is why i chose this topic because mariners and sailors have always been so adept so successful in handling vuka because vuka is nothing like but but like a fog you see in a fog you have uncertainty you have ambiguity you don't know sometimes what lies ahead you cannot see the future you cannot see the horizon so so navigation in fog is something it's a beautiful example of how <laughs> navigators have <laughs> i hope everything is okay okay go ahead sogat yeah sir we request everybody to mute the mic Yeah. Uh, 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 dear all, uh, we request all of you all to mute your mic, please. It's a special request. Please mute your mics. Thank you. Go ahead, Shakat. Thank you, Captain Shashi Kumar. Thank you. Yeah. So, so navigation in fog has it's like navigating through vuka, and that's the reason one of the reasons why I chose. So the the situation is, how do we? If vuka is an elephant, it's it's more than. you know it's almost coming out of our plate it's more than we can handle how do we eat the elephant there is a saying which says how do we eat the elephant and the answer is we eat the elephant bite by bite but you know somehow i don't like this uh, question and answer you know that is there normally everybody asks how do you eat the elephant and the answer comes you know you eat the elephant bite by bite somehow i don't like like this sentence because why should i why should i want to eat an elephant why why should i go and eat, try and eat an elephant for me i want to rather move it you know so my question is how do you move an elephant you know it's very difficult to move an elephant right so how do you move a big thing which is happening in your life a vuka moment a vuka environment how do you get rid of this how do you handle this how do you move an elephant and the answer is ladies and gentlemen you move an elephant one step at a time we move an elephant one step at a time and that's one of the main key strategies that is played by all the strategists around the world if you need to move an elephant you cannot try to move an elephant at once you need to move an elephant one step at a time so so this is what the solution to vuka is the solution to vuka is vuka itself so if you want to tackle volatility you need to have vision we need to have vision proper vision we need to be able to see and gauge and we need to be telling ourselves what is coming ahead of us without vision the volatility will not go in order to handle uncertainty we need understanding we need understanding of the situation because if we do not understand the situation now we will not understand what is going to come later to handle complexity we need clarity if there is no clarity if we do not develop clarity into our systems into our management systems into our personal life we will always remain in a complex environment and lastly and perhaps the most important part of handling vuka is we need to develop agility so we need to be agile and the and the skill of agility is transforming from one state to the another to present from past to present to future we need to be accepting change you know so we need to be a lot of people say disruption but i say transformation we need to take disruption as a mere transformation tool 
We need to change our lives because lives are changing. And if we do not try to change our lives, the change will be thrust upon us. So, you know, if you keep this in mind and develop these, many people have their different strategies to develop vision, understanding, clarity, and agility. For all of us, we can understand VUCA and we develop this VUCA to combat VUCA itself. We need to develop these, these strategies into our personal and business life. Think of this, and I'm showing you these people, how these people handle VUCA, you know, think of Superman. Superman can see through things. He can see through anything, you know, like he's got extra vision. So he's, he, he's tackling uh, volatility with vision. Think of Chota Bhim. Chota Bhim understands the problem of others and tries to help. Think of uh, uh, Catwoman. The Catwoman has clarity in her life. The way she sees things, we'll not be able to see. And the most important part, when we talk about agility, we have the skills of Spider-Man. He's agile. He, he just transforms himself from one place to the other. And so these are the skills we, which, which we need to develop. But, but we are not superhuman beings. We, we don't expect to be Superman and Spider-Man and Churabim and Catwoman, right? So how, we are just mere mortals. So how do we handle and strategize against VUCA? So this is again where uh, I find sailors and we need to learn from navigators how we can navigate through VUCA. You know, we, we, we keep a lookout on the bridge, right? What we are doing is, and this is, you're looking at the horizon. Now, why are you looking at the horizon? We are looking at the horizon because we're trying to see the smaller boats. We are trying to see that very small drop on, on, on the waves, right, on the horizon. Because the bigger ones, the bigger boats and the larger ships are available and they, they can be perceived and they can be seen by the naked eye. But the smaller boats, we cannot see. So, you know, you need to read the room for smaller things. And I'll tell you how helpful it is to understand and control the VUCA environment. So I've just, I have just finished a series on Netflix. It's called Mentalist, a highly recommended one. It took me, I was, I was engrossed in this series for months. It was a seven series uh, uh, film and uh, I just finished it last week. And it, this Mentalist is, a, is this man, he's, he's a part of the FBI and he's, uh, he can read through people's mind. And uh, Patrick Jane, his name was Patrick Jane. And he, if, you, if you put him in a room, he will see things which you don't see. He doesn't have any extraordinary skills. He's not a superhuman. But, but he sees things which others cannot. He'll see a photograph and he will see something that you have not yet discovered. So he has the skills of a mentalist. We need to learn to how to read the room properly. Look at the smaller things. Observe the smaller things rather than just the big ones, you know. So once you observe these boats, once you scan the horizon, once you observe the boats, you know where you want to go or you know where you don't want to go and what you need to avoid. And that is the first step for coming on to handle VUCA. So what do you do when you, when, you, when you see these small boats? Right? You found out, you've scanned the horizon, you've read the room, you know these small boats are there. What do you do? We come back to the chart table. We strategize. We come back and we start laying our courses. We start laying courses, right? So if you want to go from point A to point B, and the navigators will definitely understand this, and so will the others. If you want to go from point A to point B, and I start laying a course from point A, I would rather want to lay a course like this, right? From point A to point B. And these are these blue ones, the blue circles are the waypoints. The waypoints are extremely important in our lives. We need to understand, identify, where it will take us. So we need to break down the full, full course, you know, into smaller breakpoints. We don't want to run across over the ground from A to B. It's not, not done, right? And it's just not done because not only will it, you know, you cannot do this because we are uh, navigating our ships on sea, but because a smaller course will help you to plan your voyage better. Think about it. A smaller course helps us to plan our voyage better. So what happens is if we need to go a greater distance, we break the greater distance down into smaller goals. So stop the long-term planning because the VUCA, the long-term planning doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work out because we, we don't know what's lying ahead, right? So, so for example, now, if I need to plan for the next five years, I'm not gonna, I, I, I don't even know whether I'm going to live for more than one year, right? So if I don't, of course, handle VUCA the way it should be. So break down your goals into smaller ones. Stop thinking long-term. Start thinking short-term. So this is one strategy. Second strategy is 
which will help us to understand and control VUCA is that we need to develop the skills of finding and observing anomalies. You know, anomalies are out of the ordinary things. A person who understands and finds out the anomaly first rules the world. So, you know, in a navigating chart, you will see areas which is marked magnetic anomaly. In fact, there's a whole, uh, there's a whole uh, superstition or maybe a whole uh, story behind uh, the Bermuda Triangle being, being just, it's just, of course, just the theory and I'm, I'm not supporting this, but uh, a lot of people believe that the Bermuda Triangle is nothing but a place of magnetic anomaly. So you need to understand and map these anomalies. Until unless we know these anomalies, until unless we understand, we are most people don't understand the VUCA moment even while living in one, right? Until unless it's thrust upon us. I'll give you a small story. There was this professor in Harvard, and he was teaching one of the biggest business brains in the in the world. So biggest business, most intelligent business brains goes to Harvard. Of course, there's another story that some of them who go to Harvard are not intelligent at all, but Harvard is Harvard and they make them intelligent and they make them uh, business uh, brains. So, so this professor had stuck up a few coins in the wall. Nobody knew about the coin. He stuck up these few coins at a discreet corner of the wall. And then when he finished the class and everybody was going out, he stopped the people, stopped the students and said, is there any anomaly in the room? Can you find out? And people were just looking here and there and nobody could find out any anomalies. Still, one person, one lady, one student, one girl raised up her hand and said, you know, there is one anomaly. There, is, there are three coins stuck up in the wall at the end. And then the professor turned to her and said, if you cannot see money on the wall, you cannot become a successful businessman. And I'll repeat this for you. If you cannot see money on the wall, you will never ever be a successful businessman. So if you're talking about business, we need to see money on the wall, even when the money is not there. And that's why today, uh, with, with due regards to all the other communities, that's why today Gujaratis and Marwaris are such successful businessmen, you know, like because they see money where nobody else could see it. So, so what they're trying to do, what they're doing is they have that extraordinary skill to perceive the environment and see what other people don't. So, this is a major skill to develop in a VUCA. So I'll come back to uh, maybe the second last, slide, sli second last slide of this. And I, I, I promise this is going to be very short. I didn't want to take your time on, 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 a, on much time on a Friday. So with vision is required for volatility. And you can have your own tools. You can have your own meetings to develop vision. How you can look ahead. Understanding is required to handle uncertainty. If you do not understand the situation, we cannot handle uncertainty. Clarity is required for dealing with complexity. The clarity comes with understanding. If you do not understand, because we need to know that there are multiple factors that are affecting the outcome. We need to take out like the nine pins. We need to take out every pin. And then with every pin, we need a solution for all these. And then only we'll have the clear picture of how this is unfolding. And we need to be agile. If you're staying put in one, person, one, one state and saying that, no, I will not change, I will not improve, I will not move from point A to point B, and I, then it's, it's very ambiguous because then ambiguity will always stay into our lives. And that's why I say change and transformation is so important in our lives because it makes us agile. It, it makes us not only travel from point A to point B, it helps us to come to terms with the new world. Otherwise, we will not know what lies ahead. Right. So this is my last slide. And before I thank uh, CMMI for this opportunity, I would again say we have the traditional compass, but navigation through VUCA is, is an excellent science. We, we, we should use the compass of VUCA. And in this scenario, while I pray for everybody who's affected with this scenario and, uh, and their families, I know we are sitting on and we are sailing on a VUCA moment, a one, one VUCA environment, which is strongest than anything which we have experienced ever in our lives before. There is ambiguity, there is uncertainty, there is complexity, and there is, there is chaos that is all around. But the only way, the only way we can handle VUCA is through vision, proper vision, proper understanding, proper clarity, and a really understanding of the situation and using our 
binoculars to scan the horizon and using the VUCA compass for navigation. Thank you, CMMI. And I'm really grateful of, to like to for all of you for, uh, for listening in. And uh, there was a bit of uh, chaotic uh, VUCA moment in, in, in the middle of the lecture, but we handled it properly. And thank you uh, to Captain Basin. Thank you to Captain Jha. Uh, all my personal mentors, all of you have been my personal mentors. I've learned so much uh, from, from all of you. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shakat. Uh, thank you for this great concept and a very absorbing session. Thank you, Mukherjee. It was very interesting. We would like to keep hearing you, you know, on and on. <laughs> okay, but then being our session as we are about to close down, I will request uh, Captain Basin, uh, our Secretary General, to give the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Captain Sati Kumar. Uh, first of all, I just want, I'm just absorbing the information, uh, huge information that Captain Shokat has shared with all of us. Uh, when the first he told us about uh, VUCA, uh, it was a new subject. I mean, uh, then he explained it to me and he just took off. And I also would like to tell the gathering that he's doing a special courses on VUCA, an excellent course where few of our friends our uh, people have attended uh, excellent feedback. So I suggest all of you, please look up to that courses, uh, what Captain Shokat Mukherjee is doing. And uh, during the course, I mean, there are so many other back, uh, boundaries open up, so many other avenues he takes you. And the way he does that uh, course, it's excellent, excellent one. And uh, thank you for Captain Shokat Mukherjee for consenting to come here for our uh, it's, it's webinar. My pleasure, sir. So I will just start with my <laughs> proposed word of thanks, uh, respected Captain B.K. Jha, Master, CMI, CMI uh, respected wardens, office bearers, CMI members, members of the shipping fraternity, fraternity and all the participants here today. Privileged to propose a word of thanks. As I said, Captain Shokat Mukherjee, uh, he's a CMI member, founder and CEO of the Naval Connection, author, of mind over water. We thank you, Captain Shokat, for participating in today's CMI webinar by giving us insight to navigating through VUCA. I'm sure a lot of people will have a lot of uh, queries, questions. I request all of them to please send it to the Captain Sasi Kumar and uh, uh, we can also share the number of Captain Shokat Mukherjee and he has already said his willingness to share the information with whomever wants. Thank you, Captain Shokat, sir. I will also like to thank all the media who have extens uh, extensively covered the event, including all CMI events, Sailor Today, Marek, Sea Job, Marine Link, Waves, Pandharka Publication. Thank you. Our uh, thanks to uh, Captain Kastu Padan, Deputy Master, for welcoming the participant and his overall support, Captain Sachi Kumar for introducing the speakers and overall <laughs> Mr. Evans, can you just... Uh, thank you. Go ahead, sir. Was I audible, Susi, or I have yes, to sir. repeat? No, no, sir. Can go ahead, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so I was at the uh, after Captain Shokat. I had thanked uh, the media. I will repeat now. We thank all the media. Uh, Marex, uh, Sailor Today, but Narka Publications, Sea Job, Sagar Sandesh for covering the CMI events. Our thanks to Captain Kastu Pardhan, Deputy Master, for welcoming the participants. And his overall support, Captain Sachi Kumar, CEO, for the introducing the speakers and planning. Office manager, Mr. Sudhi, for his back end overall support. Last but not least, we thank all the participants without whom the webinar would not have been possible. Thank you all, sirs. I would also request people can put on their video so Sachi Kumar can take a, a photograph.
so we can give it to our future magazine kanna shokar sir you rock a new subject very relevant subject i i know it will take time for us to grasp slowly slowly but it is the future thank you very much sir i am i am i am really honored for uh, cmi uh, giving me this opportunity and really honored also for so many people who are engaging and uh, i'm i'm open to questions anytime you can mail me at shaukat at navelconnection.com i'll take questions or you can mail to uh, cmmi i can get those questions from there as well thank you sir thank you thank you uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes sir captain ja sir tell me how are you sir people have so many questions to ask if they want now after captain shaukat is open <laughs> if somebody has a question okay please put it on the chat is it okay with you captain ja and captain shokat absolutely okay sir absolutely okay i can see the 13 questions are there anyway never mind shakat it will be your responsibility to answer these questions yeah i i am i am open to them so i can't see those questions i don't know i'm i'm uh, swiping through the chats i'm unable to see those questions Yeah, I also didn't get any one on the chat. Otherwise, I would have taken off immediately. No yeah, man, this is a new concept, a new thought, new idea. It will take some time to people to think. And that's sir, uh, in my in our uh, when I do those five hours workshop, we play a game, and most of you know this. And we play uh, these Edward de Bono six thinking hats, and it's an excellent uh, exercise. It's an exercise of uh, around two hours. where you have these different colored hats white uh, blue uh, gray uh, orange and 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 black and you wear those hats and each hat can only think in a certain way and uh, we make groups and we play this and you will be amazed as to how uh, how uh, you know in in a group if i tell you you only can think negative and one one person who is wearing the white hat can only think creative the other person wearing the blue hat can only think uh, positive and negative as things like that limitations you will be amazed at what kind of creation the group can do so it's a it's a beautiful game uh, that we play uh, to to stress on the how we can handle buka maybe i have a question sorry captain jab please go ahead i said this concept of the hat colorful hat will keep it for the next time Absolutely, absolutely, sir. I can I can do a small session on uh, on uh, Edward De Bono's six thinking hats. I will. I can also invite somebody who's uh, qualified as uh, uh, the six thinking hats analyst. So and we can we can have an online this thing. So uh, we'll make you wear uh, the hat, and you can only talk about that particular trait the hat demands. We can do that, sir. Definitely. Thank you very much, Captain Basin. You take over. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain Shokar, just one question, if I may ask: When is your next uh, uh, regular course? Is, is it okay if we announce here? Yeah, absolutely. I, my, I know I, two people from my company attended; they were very happy. But yeah, when, yeah. Uh, when, so, so when I, are you I, conducting we, the next one? So we do about four or five courses a month, and I am running the the last uh, train the virtual trainers course. This a master class was after uh, they, they, they completed on seventh, eighth, ninth of uh, April. It was a huge success. and the next master class is on 28 29 and 30th of april and uh, it is uh, together with irs and uh, it's, it's it's an amazing course for uh, for for knowing how to engage the audience while online then we have a course coming up on uh, winches uh, you know uh, the brake testing and the winches and everything about winches because there's so many accidents happening in mooring so we thought we will take a course on mooring and mooring winches and the safety again so that's coming next month and also a course on valves marine valves everything to do with valves so these three courses are lined up in the next 20 days thank you very exhaustive thank you so much uh, i will uh, i mean you really i say to repeat my words you rock captain shaukat so it's not like that i am just trying to do my bit and just trying to survive in this vuka world but uh, we have successfully trained more than 1500 students in the last uh, 14 months now uh, 1500 seafarers in what virtual... your information my uh, company trainers who attended they are already after me to he held a session <laughs> even for the my manning people he says forget the navigation it is also how to engage with the people 
yes. how to do there are just so many aspects they were telling me and they will contact you they will be contacting you, you soon thank you thank you sir aap hai bas wahi chahiye bas there's no problem just keep your i want all the seniors to just keep their hands on top of my head that's all what i want <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone sir thank you so much for being here on the see my platform thank you seller today also and uh, i thank the media i will be uh, we've got a huge network of uh, followers on social media i will be uh, doing if i get uh, the audio or video from seller today a link then i will be uh, posting them on the social media as well okay sir can seller today is here online with us already so they are doing the live te- telecast so i'm sure they will be more than happy to share with you the contents as they have done in the past also there is one okay then we will close the meet here comment Sorry. from yes. arka uh, arya kale sir to during emergency there is very little time to think take any action so how can we improve our decision making so that positive action is taken in ample time so this is a very interesting question and very interesting statement bought by Arya, see, see the, the the handling of the VUCA doesn't happen in an emergency. So, so if you hand try to handle and strategize for VUCA, you will indirectly be able to uh, not be in a position where you can't take a decision in emergency. So, VUCA actually tells you how it's it's a long term planning which you have to embed in your system. Uh, once you embed that handling of the VUCA in your system and look ahead, then uh, you know exactly what to do in an emergency. So, so that's that's how. And any online small courses for cadets? Yes, I have a course which is uh, training cadets for uh, interviews, interview preparation. I have plenty of courses for cadets, by the way. Developing values, uh, business ethics, uh, t- training on. Um, so we have a lot of courses. You can you can contact me separately, please. Thank you, sir. That's all from my end. I just saw this, so I thought I'll reply. Thank you, thank you, Captain Sathi. All yours. uh yes sir uh, nothing much uh, we will close down and thank you all once again and thank you once again shokat it has been a wonderful experience thank you sir and a, a certainly and a very absorbing one thank you uh, thank you all and thank you everyone thank you. thank you thank you Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.